All right, so this is more about Annie Funk. We talked about her, or we wrote a paragraph about her in language this year, but um, Annie Funk grew up as a Mennonite girl in Pennsylvania. Her father was a deacon in the Mennonite church. In her youth, she studied to be a teacher and a missionary. Annie served as a missionary in Tennessee and New Jersey before moving to India in 1906. So it was a little bit over a hundred years ago. She was the first unmarried female Mennonite missionary in India. Annie started a one-room school for girls in India who were not allowed to attend the village school. In 1912, she received a telegram that her mother was ill. And Annie left India for a furlough. That means like a break from um, missionary, from being a missionary. So she left India for a furlough and died on the Titanic during her home, during her voyage home. Annie's school in India is now, now called the Annie Funk Memorial School. So that's a little bit about Annie. She lived from 1879, she was born in 1879, 1874, 1874, and died in 1912, the year of the Titanic. So this is a story called Annie Funk. She lived to serve and dared to sacrifice. And I'll try to remember to show you the pictures. But yes, we're on the map for history. So let's go. All right. Um, Sharon Yoder wrote this book. All right. So a warm spring day dawned near Bali, Pennsylvania on April 12, 1874. A little girl had just been born to James and Susanna Funk. They smiled with delight. The baby yawned and stretched. How they loved their tiny daughter. James and Susanna Funk named their baby Annie. Her name meant God's gift. Surely she was God's gift to this young mother and their father and her father. Someday she would be God's gift to city people and to India's young girls. She would also be God's gift to a frightened family aboard the Titanic. When Annie was seven years old, she went to school. The little schoolhouse had all the grades together in one room. The big boys and little girls studied with the little boys and big girls. Annie eagerly learned how to read and write. One day she watched her teacher write on the blackboard, I want to be a teacher too, Annie whispered to herself. I want to teach children how to read and write. Annie's, Annie grew and grew. Annie's mother taught her how to cook, bake, and sew. Annie diligently helped her mother with her work. During hot summer days, she hoed the garden and pulled weeds. Sometimes she helped her mother do laundry. Annie swished the dirty clothes around in a large tub of water. Then she hung, hung the wet clothes on a line to dry. Winter time was lots of fun for Annie. When at first snow came, she bundled up and built snowmen. Snow brought sleighing time too. How thrilling it was to go on sleigh rides. Icy wind nipped their noses. The cold made their cheeks rosy red. Hot bricks under their feet kept them warm on their long, frosty rides. Every Sunday, Annie's family went to church. Her family attended the Hereford Mennonite Church. Her father was a deacon. Annie loved going to church. She joyfully sang hymns. She listened quietly to sermons. Annie liked to read. She read books about people in faraway places. If I were a missionary, I could visit faraway places too, Annie mused. As Annie daydreamed, she whispered to herself, I could go to the jungles of Africa. There I might see elephants and lions, or perhaps I should choose China. What fun it would be to ride in a sampan on the Yangtze River. She did not know which to choose. When Annie was a young lady, she was determined to become a teacher. I will need to get some teacher training. She told her family, Annie heard about a school that helped young women become teachers. This school was called State Normal School. It was located in Westchester, Pennsylvania. Yes, I will go to State Normal School. I will train to be a teacher, Annie decided. Many months later, Annie received her teacher's certificate. Now she could teach boys and girls. But Annie told her family and friends, I will not teach right now. I have another plan. Annie said, I want to be a missionary and a teacher. 
Annie went to another school in Northfield, Massachusetts. It was called the Northfield Bible Training School. On graduation day, Annie received her diploma. Her family and friends asked, will you be a teacher now? Will you be a missionary in another country? Annie replied, I will not teach. I will not go to another country now. First, I will help people in this city. These people need the gift of God's love. Annie moved to a city in Tennessee. Many people lived in the slums. Annie said, I will help these poor people. I will take them gifts of food and clothing. I will, make them, I will help make them happy. She worked among the city people for a long time. One day she talked to her friends in the city. I must leave you now, she said sadly. I have other work to do. Annie moved to New Jersey. She worked with the people in New Jersey, but Annie did not forget her dream to be a missionary in another country. Sometimes she prayed, please Lord, let me go to another country. By now, Annie was over 30 years old. One day she met with the mission board. I want to help more people. Send me to India as a missionary, Annie pleaded. The mission board thought and talked about it. We will let you go as a missionary with another missionary lady, they finally agreed. You will be the first Mennonite lady to be sent to India. Thank you, Annie exclaimed. She smiled and left the room. She had many things to prepare for her journey to India. Many weeks later, Annie and the other ladies were almost ready to leave. Annie and the other lady were almost ready to leave. Alas, the lady became too ill to go with Annie. I will not give up my plans. I shall go alone, Annie declared. Oh. Right. It was a chilly, windy November day in 1906. Annie wrapped a warm shawl tightly about her. She hugged her family and her friends. Goodbye, and God be with you, Annie said bravely. She would miss her family and friends. Annie's friend was frightened. I do not want you to cross the ocean alone, Annie, she sobbed quietly. Annie hugged her friend and replied, I am not afraid. Our Heavenly Father is near to us, on sea as on land. My trust is in Him. I have no fear. Annie waved goodbye as she walked up the gangplank. Weeks later, Annie arrived in Zhangjir, Zheng India. Everything was different from America. The food was spicy with curry. The women wore saris. The, house were, the houses were little mud huts. The, houses, the, the language was strange to her, but Annie was brave, was a brave missionary. She had much courage. She boldly said, God will help me. Annie learned how to live like the people in India. She learned to speak the Hindi language. She could finally understand them. Annie often felt sad for the young girls in India. They had a hard life. Young girls were not valued very much in India. They were not allowed to attend the village school. Only boys could attend the school. One day, Annie watched the oxen that pulled the carts. She exclaimed to herself, why, most people in India think that the oxen are more important than the village girls. This is not fair. Something must be done, Annie said stubbornly. Suddenly, Annie thought of an exciting plan. She could build a new school for these poor Indian girls. Annie pulled out a sheet of paper and got her ink pen. She drew plans to build a schoolroom. It took many days to build a one-room schoolhouse. The walls were strong and it had dirt floor, but that did not matter. It still was a fine place to, to learn. Annie hopped on her bicycle. She had another plan. She visited the village houses with girls. She knocked on many doors. Please, Annie would ask moms and dads, could your daughter come to my school? Your daughter will learn to read and write, she promised. 17 young girls attended Annie's school the first year. How the students loved Miss Annie. She had given them the gift of reading and writing. Annie had lived in Zhangjir, India, about five years when dreadful news arrived. A telegram arrived at Annie's house. She op opened the telegram with trembling fingers. It read, Mother very ill. Have purchased on two ships. Oh wait, so she, her father purchased her ships to get her back. Annie longed to see her mother who was ill. Annie quickly made plans to travel back to her home in America. Annie packed her bags. She boarded a train in Zhangjir, India. The train traveled to Bombay, India. Bombay was a large coastal city. At the harbor, Annie boarded the Persian. That's the name of that ship. The ship sailed to Marseille, 
Marseille, France. Annie was getting closer home. Her next stop was Liverpool, England. There she was scheduled to board a ship called the Haverford. The Haverford would sail across the Atlantic Ocean to America. Annie talked with a man at the ticket counter. I need, to, I need to sail on the Haverford, she said. Sorry, replied the man. The Haverford is not sailing. The ship's company is on strike. Annie was dismayed. How will I sail to America? She wondered. Annie was extremely weary from the long journey. Discouraged, she wondered what to do next. Then the man spoke. You could travel on the Titanic. It's faster than the Haverford. However, you will need to pay more money to buy a ticket to the sail on the Titanic. Annie stood silently, wondering what to do. My mother is ill. I need to get home quickly. The Titanic is faster than the Haverford. Yes, I will pay more money, Annie decided. She bought a second class ticket. Her ticket number was 237671. She traveled to Southampton, England. Annie boarded the brand new Titanic with approximately 2,200 passengers and crew. The Titanic pulled out of harbor on April 10, 1912. It began its maiden voyage across the Atlantic Ocean. The Titanic was the largest and fastest ship built in those days. The captain boasted that the ship was unsinkable. He bragged that it would break all sailing speed records. Annie was glad to travel on such a fast ship. I will be home soon, she exulted. In the meantime, Annie relaxed and began enjoying her voyage. I will celebrate my 38th birthday in two days on this luxurious ship, she murmured happily to herself. Four nights later, Annie was sleeping. The stars were twinkling brightly overhead. Suddenly, there was a grinding jolt. The Titanic had struck an iceberg. The captain had been warned about the icebergs earlier. He was not worried that anything would happen. Now, the lower compartments of the ship began filling with water. The unsinkable Titanic might sink indeed. Shortly after midnight, Annie was rudely awakened. She heard a voice shouting. Someone pounded on the cabin door. She opened the door to crack a crack. Hurry to the deck, the Titanic is sinking, yelled the steward. Moving quickly, Annie dressed warmly. She heard more shouting and scurrying of feet. Annie swung open the cabin door. She hurried through the maze of corridors to reach the deck of the ship. As Annie reached the deck, she took a gulp of frigid night air. Is the Titanic really sinking, she wondered. Bewildered, Annie paused a moment wondering what to do. The deck was crowded with people. Some people were pushing close to the railing. Annie darted toward them. Lady, jump into the lifeboat. There is room for one more person, a sailor yelled frantically. Annie peered warily into the watery darkness. The lifeboat was already loaded with people. Hurry, lady, the late sailor insisted. Annie was star started carefully climbing over the ship's edge down toward the lifeboat. Just then, a frightened mother started climbing over the side of the ship, too. The crewman pulled her back. My children, my children, the mother screamed. The lifeboat was too full for the distressed mother. Annie heard the crying children on the loaded lifeboat. They were frantically reaching for their mother. Quickly, Annie pulled herself back on the deck. Hurry, go to your children, Annie urged the wailing mother. The grateful mother hurriedly obeyed and dropped into the lifeboat. The lifeboat pushed off. Annie remained behind. Annie looked about the deck. Was there another lifeboat for her? No, there was no other lifeboat for Annie. She shivered in the freezing night. What would happen to her? The Titanic was sinking fast in the frigid waters. Her hands and knees trembled. Then Annie remembered that she was not alone, that she knew that her heavenly father was with her on the sinking Titanic. He had promised never to leave her or forsake her. She was comforted and closed her eyes to pray. The Titanic, with its bright lights, began tilting into the water. Suddenly, a very loud crack started, startled Annie and the other people left on the deck. Then the ship broke in two. The people on the lifeboats stared in horror. The ship's stern stood vertical for a moment, pointing toward the blinking stars. Then the ship slid out of sight. It disappeared into the dark, cold water. Morning dawned. The Titanic could be seen could not be seen anywhere. 
However, all was well for Annie. Her heavenly father had been near to her on land. He had been near to her on sea. Annie was home with him. People in Bali, Pennsylvania did not forget Annie Funk. They remembered her kindness and hard work. They remembered how she loved God and her people. They remembered her sacrificial love for her mother and her children. For the mother and her children. A memorial was erected in honor of Annie. If you visit the Hereford Mennonite Church Cemetery in Bali, Pennsylvania, you can see the memorial. And that is the story of Annie Funk, a missionary and um, person that served Christ and helped people. And she was, she died on the Titanic. So, all right, that's your history for today.